Good evening, everyone. This is Sandal Star Saber once again. I'm here to do another roster review. Tonight, we're going to take a look at Dr. Disrespect. Dr. Disrespect is a member of Dark Phoenix Rising, has requested a uh, roster review video. Um, I see you very uh, bulky roster. That's the first thing I noticed coming in here um, for uh, where you're at. I mean, you've got a GP level of 2.4, which is about... 0.6 million maybe even more higher than the last two videos i've done so you're probably running a little higher than your typical member of dark phoenix rising i also notice that at the same time you lack a lot of the meta um characters that a lot of the other people have had in the, in the past videos i've reviewed nothing against you i mean everyone has their budgets i don't expect everyone to drop several hundred dollars to get darth revan um or Jedi Revan or any other meta. Meta chasing has its own risk, believe me. Um you can drop a thousand dollars, get yourself the best meta team out there, and six months later it's rendered only uh kinda good because some new shiny toy comes out and makes it effectively obsolete. So nothing wrong with that there. But the trick here is when we look at your roster, looking at these arena rank numbers. Um, I, I think we can definitely help you do better. I'm kind of surprised that you're not higher already to be looking at it, be frank, quite candidly right now. It looks like you have a lot of potential with the, the roster you do have. I don't know if it's uh, your characters themselves, your strategy, a combination of things. We'll take a look at all those things, see if we can help you out the best. Maybe even just revamp your team to try to get higher. Although, Bastila was a very good meta not too long ago. Um, so maybe she can work out for you. The question is how how we can best help you get there. <laughs> Same thing for Arena. You've got your fleet arena has a lot of good solid ships there. I think we can help you get there. The question is how we're gonna do it. And let's go ahead and deep dive your roster first. So um now I notice here you've gotten a few of the uh, heroes, you got the Commander Luke Skywalker as a hero's journey character. I did not see if you got Jedi Training Ray. You do not yet. So it looks like as far as the hero's journey characters, you've only got the one, which is Commander Luke Skywalker. Nothing wrong with that. But I will tell you, when it comes to controlling the metas, Hero's journey characters tend to be very core to that capability. That and, uh, that and Sith Triumvirate, which is kind of an exception to that rule, um, will help you get there. But that's a few metas old, so and I don't expect that to be of any value to you in the near term. So right now we're going to focus on maybe getting you with what you have to work with already and working with what you got. So... Um, and there are some good options here. I'm seeing a lot of ways you can take this forth. A lot of ways you can play around here. Um, and we'll take a look into some of those options for you. See what works the best. And you're, I'd say just try different things. One thing you can do if you're not reaching, I'd say top 100 is a very a reasonable goal for you and what you have right now. Um, may not be overnight. may take you some... Uh, crystal refreshes when you get to the higher ranks but i think it's very doable on your end and there's actually several ways you could go about it here the question is which one makes the most sense to you here because there is a lot of meta capability teams without having to dig into the current uh revan variants that are out there or um or the uh, off liar galactic republic which you don't have your padme either so you're not going to be able to go very far there so that's just uh it, it's going to have to work with what you got and try to build on what you can so first thing i would recommend for you if you're not already start to focus on making sure you're ready for the hero's journey characters you got commander luke skywalker that's good the next thing you want to do take a look at your first order i think you have bb8 at at seven stars let me uh Check that real quick and verify. Yeah, yeah, you're BB-8 at seven stars. So you should be uh, 
there shouldn't be anything stopping you at this point, from what I can tell from uh, getting Ray Jedi training the next time she's around. Don't ask me the schedule. I've been so detached from that for more than a year now, so I don't know exactly when that'll be. But go ahead and make her a priority when she comes in and, and go ahead and snag that character quickly. Um, it may be that you were away from the game for a while and you had a pretty good roster to start with, and maybe you missed those milestones when they were there. Hit them when they come again. That'll be a big one for you. Now, what's not going to be in the near term for you, just looking at things I took a look earlier, is probably your Revens. You got some built here. I see you built up Jolie, you built up Bastila, because those are your arena teams. I would say work towards these other characters, but do it in a uh, in a uh, more gradual stance. You don't want to try to make them all seven stars tomorrow. That's not going to happen, not unless you got a lot in your actual personal budget you can throw at these characters to really build them up that quickly because honestly you can probably do without them and the metas are shifting the revenue the revenue wave will still be valuable to those who have it already but it's not so valuable that you need it tomorrow because there's going to be shifts like separatists galactic republic things that you already have somewhat to work with that you can probably build maybe even a little quicker so again looking at your inventory here let's take a look at those options so now both uh, galactic republic and separatists ironically rely on separatists separatists give you padme padme gives you um a workable galactic republic team so i would say either way you're going to derive value from building up your separatists and to an extent, you've already gone a decent length towards that direction. You have some more work on your V2 as far as stars go. I mean, that's it, you just, it's a pretty steady build. I would make that one of your priorities. I would make your uh, ship hard node gaming the uh, and your hard node uh, your hard node light side gaming. Uh, Focus on your Droidic and your B1 Battle Droid as well. I would build these characters up. Maybe Newt Gunray as well. Newt Gunray is a good substitute. He might be quicker to gear and get up to gear 12. And then you throw on a couple Zetas on Grievous, maybe a couple Zetas on Newt Gunray. Get Magna Guard up there. And really, you can kind of supplement this team with whatever. And looking towards the future, now, I wouldn't make this a tomorrow thing. Don't expect this to take you to number one tomorrow. But I would keep keep your uh, I would keep working towards this team, adding some Zetas here and there, try to make this good, because three months from now, that may be getting you the number one, and that will depend on some other things as well. So keep this in your back pocket. Don't necessarily make it your instant priority. The team you've got is pretty solid. There's really no reason that a team with Bastila should not be able to get. Definitely top 200, I mean, depending on your shard composition. I don't think top 100 is drastically unachievable either. I mean, I can look at one of the oldest shards in the game, and if we start to scroll down through the ranks, there's me there, and we can go ahead and bring it down further and further. You see a lot of Revan, a lot of Revan. We're up into the 40s, 50s, still Revan's. Okay, getting Commander Luke Skywalker. So we have people who are using Commander Luke Skywalker now and getting in top 50. So that's one you have. Now, as you can see, there's still a lot of rev in there, and I can't go any further down, unfortunately, because unless you got people, you're actually in that race, you're not going to be able to see that. But I would wager there are probably someone with a Bastila or a Night Sister team or something along those lines that are in the top 100 right now. I would bet. So, something to consider. Just making sure that your team works for you and you know how to play with it. <coughs> Excuse me, that's going to be another key. You're probably most comfortable with this Bastila team now. Maybe you haven't been using it very long. Maybe you have. But I will say if you're somewhere in the 800 ballpark in Arena, Unless you've just got the most cutthroat shard in the game right now. I, I think you're underselling yourself. And I think you can probably achieve a lot more if you build the right team to get there. Um, so I'm going to take a look at some things that can help you do that. 
Now, you've got some very good plug and play characters here. You got R2D2 with two uh, Zetas. That was a good move on your part. You got Grand Admiral Thrawn, and he has only his leadership Zeta. I would make somewhere in your prioritization scale the ebb and flow. That's what makes his fracture the most potent it can be. So I'd make that a priority there. Now, um, some things that you do have built up already. You have your Vader and your Palpatine. Those are uh, pretty reliable characters, the Palpatine lead at getting you um, closer to the top. If you're not having much success with your Bastla, maybe give that a try and see what else you can throw in. Thrawn would be a good choice. Um, Kylo Ren, maybe, on mass, that is. See what other Sith you have here. So we're looking at, okay, four star Scion. So you got some work to do on him. Five star Nihilus. So yeah, you, the Triumvirate's not a near term thing for you. Bastel Sean Fallen's another good one. You might be able to work in your Maul, who um, you don't have a Zeta for, but that's only for a leadership. Um, it's really up to you at this point. Count Dooku would be uh, serving both ends. He'd be your Separatist end and he would be your Sith and Sith Troopers also very widely viable. So I would make, even though you're not necessarily working on your Revens right now, Sith Trooper and Bastila Sean Fallen might be what it takes to get you there. Um, you'll have to try things out, experiment. If you like it, use it. If you don't, uh, throw it away. But uh, and all, another consideration you can go with here is nice thing about the... Uh, Palpatine lead, if you use it, it also works with Empire characters. So now if I go back to your roster, take a look at your Empire side of the house, besides the aforementioned Thrawn, you also have some strength there. You have Grand Moff Tarkin, which is good. Um, TIE Pilot, which isn't really top-end good, but it's these are some options that can augment, plug and play. If you TIE Fighter pilot you want to make them fast and crit often grand mouth target you want to make them potent darth vader you want to make them fast the way the palpatine uh, team works if you're not familiar is you want to make uh darth vader go first before anyone else because he already gets that speed bonus from his unique and that's even before zeta's and then when he casts out his uh aoe as soon as they get dispelled not too long later, the rest of your team goes almost immediately after. So that works very well. Um, and you've built your troopers, which is good for other purposes, such as the one where we're currently working with your territory wars. Um, it's really going to come down to you and your preference. I would say if you're in the 800 of the arena rankings right now, it's probably time to experiment if that's where you're stuck. Um, I, I think we can probably do better than that. Um, lots of ways you can do it. Your modding, I took a brief glance earlier. looks like you added some speed on Bastila. A lot of speed mods. Um, 74, not great numbers. So what you want to do is, as you're looking at these things, okay, you got speed as the uh, mod type, but you don't have any speed in your secondary stats. Secondary stats, with the exception of your arrow, is where the bulk of your speed's going to come from. So here you did pretty good. You got, uh, I mean, a little, little weird to have protection here, but it got you 13 speed, so understand why you did it. Um, here, again, offense, which is okay, but um, and health, which is good, but you don't really see a lot of speed there. Don't see a lot of speed there. You don't see a lot of speed there. You want to shoot for those 10-plus mods, Having the speed type subset is good, but it may very well be at this point that you get more uh, more total speed out of sets that have nothing to do with the actual uh, speed set bonus. Try to shuffle things around. I can see you put a lot of resources here. I would say in this case, I would not waste your time um, six dotting your your mods if if they don't have more than 10 speed in their secondary stats um again that's with the exception of the arrow but um you want to try to get some stronger speed stats in your mod because at least if you're using these teams that's good 
Now, if you start the separatist direction, the speed becomes less important, as does the Galactic Republic. Now, that's a little bit, like we mentioned before, that's not necessarily near to you right now. So you may not get the maximum benefit from that in the here and now by uh, trying to mod for what you're going to have when you build a separatist or a Galactic Republic team. But I would say, again, make those eventual goals that you work more gradually towards farming as you're trying to make yourself better in the arena. Um, now, looking at some of these other characters that you have modded. Uh, okay, not a lot of speed there. Again, the same recommendations. When you see a lot of speed, you've got a lot of these speed set bonuses, but nothing else. You really want to uh, branch out so that you have those speed on secondary on all your non-arrow mods and get those speed primaries get it up there um as you've probably seen in some other videos i'm in the plus 150 range you're sitting in the a lot of the time in the plus 30 range so you can probably do a little bit better than that i'm looking at some other characters plus 20 there yeah you haven't i can tell you haven't been focusing a lot on getting those speed secondary stats that's something i would recommend first is go ahead um, start shifting through the shipments every day and look for opportunities to see mods and see if they have any speed stats right out the gate. Now, I, I keep looking at four dot mods. Don't do that. Um, but look at your. But again, keep a lookout as you look for these things. See if they already have speed stats in them. That would be the first ones I'd, bulk, I'd purchase right there. You want to save your credits to some extent. If you do advance them, advance them only to um, 3, 6, 9, or 12, just so you can see what all the stats are. And if they don't have speed, um, speed secondaries of a decent amount that, you're, that pleases you, go ahead and sell them back. That's the way to do it efficiently. Um, that'll get you more bang for your buck. We have a video specifically catered towards mod farming. I suggest you watch it because I think you'll get a lot of a lot of benefit just by fine-tuning your mod strategy here. Now, I can see you had the right idea with Jolie Bendo. Had a health set, good to have, pretty decent health and protection. Um, try to focus more health than protection. Um, you get more benefit from this team than that. Decent speed, so he's actually one of the decently fast characters, which is good for Jolie. You want him to go off and you want him to call Yoda to assist off it. You've done a very good job at boosting your Yoda's offense, I see. Um, he has, when I looked earlier, almost uh, 35, 3,600 damage, excuse me, and almost 6,300 special damage that's those are some high numbers what you didn't do with your yoda is focus on your critical chance or your critical damage and you didn't add a lot of speed so he's not going as often he doesn't necessarily need as much speed as everyone else because he gets a lot of turn meter just from his abilities back but you definitely want him to hit hardest when possible the only time crit damage and crit chance are not important is when Crit immunity is everywhere. That is kind of mirror matches to what you're facing now. That's very common. Other than that, though, when you want him to um, get big numbers, you're going to need him to crit. So that's something I would try to reshuffle around. Look for uh, crit damage sets, maybe. If you could replace all your offense sets that you currently have offense sets to a crit damage set and for your... Um, triangle make it a uh, crit damage arrow or at least have that as a backup this one is good like I said if you only have um, crit immune opponents as commonly faced we're not in that meta anymore generate Revan's kind of a counter meta you're going to get more mileage having the option to make him critically hard because you're I will tell you what I could get you into the top 100 all day, but once you hit that wall of Darth Revan, if you can't put Darth Revan out in just about a single shot when you whittle them down a little bit, you're you're not going to last because those they'll get their turn and they're going to just 
throttle you. So you want to make sure you do that. Um, now, as far as your other mods are concerned, let me see, you had General Kenobi again. I think you had the right idea, adding a lot of tenacity there. You didn't add any speed. You had some crit avoidance, which helpful in its own right. But um, in some of the current metas, he'd still get eaten alive. So you want him to go faster. And specifically for your Jedi teams, he has this negotiator ability. When you get him to go earlier, he can um, drop some counterattack, which can make things even more, uh, your team even more hard to take out, is really what it does. It doesn't necessarily help you as much on offense. It can if you have the Jedi Revan working for you, which unfortunately you do not at this time. Um, research that possibility. Jedi Revan, not a bad option for um, your fifth Jedi. What I would do, though, is I would focus on making him hit even harder than he does. You got some speed on it, which is good. You can still make him faster. Um, make your crit damage higher. The biggest way to do that is to add a crit damage set with the similar stats and keep boosting up that offense. You don't have as much here as you do on Grandmaster Yoda. Um, if we're going to use him, and make him potent to an extent, too, because he does have... Block, block, bluff, and heal. Uh, uh, block, <laughs> heal, heal, block, and buff block. I'm sorry, man. Tongue twister. And because his death bait blade work does <laughs> give those debuffs, which are pretty important under certain circumstances. So if you're going to use your team, the team you got, I would continue to work it in that way. But in all senses, you're going to want speed here. You got some other options available to you. Another approach you may take that would work would be a Commander Luke Skywalker. You have Han Solo built up to uh, Gear 12. You have a Grand Animal Thrawn that can work really well with him. You have your R2. I mean, you'd want to add more Zetas to Commander Luke to make this really um, viable. You have a good uh, Ben, too. And you can also use General Kenobi with that team. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. You can use... Um, Jedi Anakin again. Now, I don't think you're super near uh, regular Chewie because, if I'm not mistaken, I'm so, if I look in the wrong, I'm in the wrong place. I'm sorry. I was thinking C3PO. C3PO is important too. Don't get me wrong. You want to work on your Ewoks just because of that reason as well. Um, but yeah, take a look at bo boosting, especially Bosk. Bosk is useful in both uh, space and ground missions. Build him up. That's got to be a priority for you, too. I would put that even over any of your separatists there as far as where you shard farm because he also gives you um, ship shards on his node. So I would definitely go ahead and make one of your priorities for the day 9B. 9B, that'll get you... Or, sorry, it doesn't give you any ships, but it does give you the Bosque shards. And you want to build that as quickly as possible. Because you want to get a good bounty hunter set, because that will get you your Chewbacca. Chewbacca, when you have him, he is a fantastic asset. He's not only good for the Commander Luke Skywalker, Han Solo team, but he's actually good plug-and-play. I see a lot of people use him. You could use him in the tur current uh, team you've got, probably, but to more effect than you had in an Anakin if you had him. So make that a priority for you. Um, Ewoks to an extent as well. And the reason I mentioned that, and same kind of thing with Night Sisters, actually, you want to get them because what will happen is there's a couple of events that happen periodically. And when you do encounter it, it gives you two Zetas at least a day when that event comes out. So working on your Ewoks at least haphazardly, especially Wicket, Wicked, you need to be at seven stars to get that event, uh, to get the Zetas. Same thing with Night Sisters. I don't remember where your Talzin is. Okay, your Talzin's not there yet. You want to get her at seven stars. You've got a lot of shard farming to do. Um, like I said, I don't know your history. I probably, it looks like you uh, probably maybe stepped away from the game and came back and were just late for a couple of Wickets, maybe. Um, that seems to be what would influence a roster look as it currently does. 
But uh, nothing wrong with that. It's just working with what you have and understanding how to make it better. Um, and that, those would be some of my suggestions. Try to get those. Uh, try to get the Jedi training raid. That'll get you a more bang for your buck in raids. You score higher raids. You'll get shards quickly. You'll get gear quicker. You'll do a lot of things. Jedi training raid as a, as a uh, hero's journey character. Is will get you the single the most bang for the buck of any uh, um, hero's journey character currently available for you that you have ready, ready access to. So make that one of your priorities. Get the Jedi training right knocked out, so you have that, and then you can move on to the next thing. Um, and once you have that, that'll give you some more options what you do in your uh, territory wars, grand arena things like that as well so those are some of my suggestions there again you're just gonna have to try out different things i think you can do better a lot better in your arena again your mod strategy should be your focus i think getting some of the shards that we've suggested should be your focus again i would probably make uh make the biggest focus on uh getting your bounty hunters at this point probably are your number one priority. So get your boss up there, get get a good uh, five, seven star characters up to the gear eleven, gear twelve range. That should probably be your gearing and farming focus for the near term. That would be priority one for you. Getting mods, get in that store every time it resets. If you have spare credits, go ahead and splurge. One thing I noticed here, you've been spending some time bringing up the bottom half of your roster. Nothing wrong with that. If I were to criticize you for that, I'd be a hypocrite because one of the reasons I'm sitting at near 5 million right now is because every single thing is 85. And a lot of them are gear 7 plus. Um, that gets you a lot of boom for the buck there. I wouldn't make it your priority right now to beef up your roster too much higher if you're not using them. There's certain characters you might get some bang for the buck out of the nest if you farmer might get some bang for the buck but you have to pace yourself um you can't have it all today so you have to choose the big ones and i'd say for you the best bang for the buck would be bounty hunters get the boss up there um get the uh you already got cab bane boba fett ig88 sam wessel greedle Rito. I would make Dengar a farming priority somewhat because he's very good. Maybe if you get around to a Django or a Singing Embo, that's great, but that's degrees of one most. You just need five good ones, and you already got five. You just really need Bosk if you're getting Chewbacca. And he'll help you over here too with your ships because you, with your ships, I'm not trying to look at Ghost here, your ships has Houndstooth. Your houndstooth will become much more durable with a seven star bosk and a gear 12 bosk and a seven star houndstooth houndstooth is the absolute biggest thing you can do to get yourself higher in the ship arena from where you're at right now build that thing up when you have it it will make you much more powerful You've been working, I see, towards the other bounty hunter ships. That's important, too. Um, Millennium Falcon, if you can get the Egg the 2000 with Xanadu Blood to 5-star, you might be able to pa pace yourself for a while because that's enough to get you a 5-star Falcon. A 5-star Falcon is really all you need to... Uh, well, not all you need, but it's definitely a big part of what you need to get into the top 50 in Ship Arena right now. The other components obviously keep working home one um building that and you want to make sure i would say specifically <laughs> looks like you don't even have cash in z-wing right now but that's one you want to get you already have the phantom and the ghost those are some big ones tie silence there could be a good gap fill there um keep working some of those ships and metas are going to change so you may not want to focus too hard on a lot of that stuff because there are introducing both uh i believe the malevolence and the negotiator capital ships which are going to shift the metas here so you might want to take a little bit of a pause the one thing i would say continue to work on that's not going to become irrelevant is the houndstooth 
So work on your Bosque, work on your houndstooth. If you get that up to speed, I, I say you'll find a lot of your gameplay elements will improve. You'll find your roster more versatile, able to handle a lot more various things there. And as far as how to get yourself higher arena, get those mods. Uh, that's the best advice I can give you there. Keep working those mods. Make them fast. Get those speed secondaries. You should see at the outset when you purchase a mod or you keep, decide to level a mod, make sure it starts at plus three, plus four, plus five right at the outset. And that's at level one. And if it's not, but if it's a mod that can add stats, just go ahead and add enough stats to see if speed's on it. If you don't see speed on the mod, discard it. More than likely, unless it's got some really banging defensive stats and you just want to make a character really strong defensively, or if you think it's got a lot of health that might help you later on down the road, um, go ahead and sell them back. A lot of these mods you got here, the only thing they're doing for you is they're really, uh, they're making you beefy, but it doesn't really matter because your opponents are running circles around you. That's the, uh, I'd say that's probably more or less the source of any struggles you're experiencing right now. So I'd make modding strategy, um, building up your Bosque, um, on, on uh, offhand, try to build up your Mother Tiles and your Wicket, um, so you can start adding a lot more Zetas to your roster. You'll see a lot of rapid improvement once you accomplish those things. So I'd make those your immediate goals for the here and now and for what you can do in the near future. And occasionally just keep your eye on the horizon and what's coming. And I would say right now, those two things are your separatists and your galactic republic. So keep working those things. Um, I think you've done a good job at working with what you have. And I can tell you probably haven't invested some of the resources that some of your uh, peers here have done and and that's that's okay i mean not a, not everyone can do that in your situation might not make a lot of sense so in your situation you have to work it from where you're operating from right now and um yeah keep working the free to play uh jedi training ray get those things and see what those see what that does for you um and we can keep working from there once you reach that point but if you have any questions please ask and in game chat or line um love to help love to keep seeing see where you go after seeing this video and learning what you can um and that's all i have for this video this is ando star saber signing out